Well, hello, this is Bob Buckley, and this short video, or maybe not so short video, um, is going to cover uh, some of the changes uh, and new features of 9.03 of the K uh, 232 library uh, for KCD. And uh, I'm going to try to touch on just the, the highlights of the more important ones. I can't cover everything. A lot of the little things like pilot holes and things like that have been adjusted and refined and worked on, but I want to just hit on the things that are highlights. And So I've got a, a typical job here, um, kitchen, uh, kind of an L-shaped kitchen with a cabinet built-in pantry, um, but we're going to stick with this island cabinet for now for showing the two flagship features of this new update. Um, the first is, is actually not a new feature, it's just a refined feature. The feature's been cleaned up and uh, you know, trying to make it work a little better and, and be a little more usable, um, but it is utilizing these two trash pullout cabinets. There's a base full height trash pullout and a base drawer over trash pullout in the base cabinets special group. Uh, so, so you can see what I've done. This cabinet's been added right here, so it's a drawer over door, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the parts for this cabinet to show you what's changed about it. Uh, so I'm going to do the 32 part listing and then go deselect everything except for uh, that one cabinet. Let that calculate. And this should look familiar for anybody who's got 9.02. If you've just got 9.0, you will not have this feature um, if you're watching this. And uh, But anybody that's got 9.01 and 9.02, you're going to see these options you know, Zargon 1, Zargon 2, Nova 1, Nova 2. Um, the new drawer box has been added of a meta box one and two. Uh, tandem box has been uh, cleaned up a lot. There's just a lot of code missing. It was a cut and paste, and just a lot of things hadn't been added yet. So that's been cleaned up. And any well, that there were several things missing uh, in the tandem boxes. David Pressure reported several things not cut listing properly, and I caught those and have fixed those. So, uh, but uh, you, you know, the, this list is very. Uh, similar to what was in 9.02, just a couple extra items, and uh, it's totally new for anybody that had 9.0 or is still using version 8. Uh, but you choose your drawer uh, type. Uh, this is the drawer box, and then the second question is your pull-out box construction. Um, and this is for the whole job. Um, we have another option that I'll show in a few minutes that, that you can actually change the drawer in a single cabinet. So, and I'm going to slide these boxes around to let you see the things that we're working on, and you may not be able to see everything because I, I have a window for just this video. Um, nothing's changed about the back. You see the cabinet number there, and there's the back. Um, the bottom, the cabinet number, or the cabinet ID, has been relocated to the back of the part, so the front of the part. Uh, no particular reason other than every other part had it on the back, and that just, just that one part had it on the front. Um, the cabinet ID on side panels, whether base, tall, or uh, wall cabinets, has been the math has just been changed from the length or width of the part divided by two to divided by three, so that it's one third, um, and it's always one third up from the bottom. So this particular end is pretty self-evident since the back groove stops and that it's got the rail pilot holes here, that this is the top and this is the bottom. But if you had a full height pair of doors with a full uh, top uh, rather than rails, it wouldn't be self-evident which was the top and which was the bottom. And they are still different um, since we have a zero reveal at the bottom and a three millimeter reveal at the top. Uh, so you really wouldn't want to get those reversed. Um, so we, I just moved the part ID to give you that indicator. Every end you uh, have will have the part ID one third of the length from the bottom, so it's always closer to the bottom. So that may be a helpful feature to, to everyone. Um, and now the drawer bottom is actually the name of the drawer bottom. I had to distinguish each drawer bottom before we just really had just one part, and, and uh, the part listing just added a quantity to it, but it was the same part for every single cabinet um, and every single drawer in a cabinet. And uh, now they have to be unique to be able to do one of the new features I'm adding. So you see here that we have a drawer bottom one, two, and three. And one thing you need to know about that, and we'll cover that cabinet next, is that drawer bottom one is always the top drawer. Drawer bottom two is always the bottom drawer, regardless of how many drawers are in it. If it's a two-drawer cabinet, then it would be drawer number two. But if it's a five-drawer cabinet, the bottom drawer is two. And then the second position is always three. 
So it would the drawer bottom number three would be just below drawer bottom number one on the three drawer stack. Um, so as long as you know that, it makes sense, and uh, the people working for you don't need to know that for the second feature I'm going to show. Um, also, uh, within the tandem box and within um, the meta box, several other you know get this deep drawer end wasn't working in the tandem box. Um, you just had dr one drawer in and it didn't distinguish between the bottom drawer or a deep drawer uh, in, and it does now for tandem box. Um, get down here, this is some of the hardware. Nailers now have a pilot hole um, to, to screw the nailer to the rail or to the bottom. In this case, this is a bottom nailer, so that's uh, the strength in that. Um, rails are renamed, like this is rail number one. Uh, at the back, this is rail number one at the front, and rail number two would be in that mid position. So these particular rails um, are all have the uh, part ID in the exact same position where before the mid rails did not. That's what I'm missing here. Did the cabinet number 67. I wanted to show you the drawer bottom. So here we have. Drawer bottom number one, two. Oh, I, I actually grabbed the wrong cabinet. This is actually the second feature. So let me back up and do this one more time. I want cabinet number 66, not 67. And I'll go ahead and get 67. So you see 67 is a three-drawer stack, and we'll go ahead and talk about that cabinet as well, that part you just saw um, while I'm here. Let me let that recalculate. And again, I want to choose Zargon drawer and Zargon pullout. Um, this new feature for this trash pullout is now going to ask us your trash hole width and so in this and we have a pull down that, that gives us the um, options that would work with the Revish shelf trash cans you can order um, from them or for any of the, from any of their distributors so you could choose a 240 250 or 260 and that will work with one of the three cans that they offer I'm going to go ahead and leave it since this is a narrow cabinet at 240 then it asks you the trash hole length front to back and here you see we have the option of 340, 350, or 450. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose 450 to show you how to, or actually I'm going to uh, leave it at 340 for right now and I'll show you, we'll run it again and I'll show you how it can change the depth of the drawer itself. Um, that's a new feature as well. Um, and this would be front to back. Um, and then it's going to ask us the radius of, you know, of that hole, what is the radius in the corner. Um, and this is the typical radius for those rubbish shelf cans, but if you need it to be something else, here we've got 26, 32, and 38. Um, but in addition to what's in the pull downs, you can just type any number you want. So if you want this radius to be 10 millimeters, you could put that in. So we're going to go ahead and leave it what it is, and then the second time we'll change it so you can see that. Um, let that calculate. So now instead of having a setting somewhere that you have to remember to go change, just every time you use that cabinet, those three questions are going to pop up and you have the opportunity to make it appropriate for for that cabinet. So now we're looking at the parts for that sink cab, I mean for that little trash pull out first. Um, again there's the back and there's the bottom and we have this new part called a stink stopper uh, and really it's just a glorified fixed shelf. Uh, fixed shelf between uh, where the mid rail would go uh, and realistically it probably does nothing but um, you know, it would give the perception of if you had something in the trash can that didn't smell good, it wouldn't drift up into the drawer above it. Uh, so, you know, it may give somebody some solace of mind. Um, also, have made certain now because we have this stink stopper or fixed shelf in here, I've made certain that all of these uh, uh, fixed shelf and rail indicators are working. They were working in most cabinets, but they weren't working at all. Now they work in all, and you've got pilot holes in there the shelf indicator or scratch line for shelves, so those are there everywhere now. Um, but here we have a drawer bottom with a hole cut out of it. And you see here that it, you know we, we've got a fixed position here um, of 38 millimeters. It's always 38 millimeters from the front. In this case we see this drawer bottom, the length is 487, so that's for a 510 millimeter drawer guide. Um, and if you wanted double cans, this hole would have to be deeper and actually too deep to actually work with a 510 millimeter drawer. But if your drawer settings say, hey, when I have a 608 deep cabinet, I want to use the 510 millimeter drawer guide, then th there's no way to really change that. So I had to add some code to, to have an if statement in there. And so now when we come in here and say, okay, I want to run this true 32 part listing for those two cabinets. And we're going to choose the Zargon drawer and it asked me this question. I'm going to answer the, this is the width, that's fine. 
But on the depth, this one will say 450 because I want to use two cans. And I'm going to go ahead and change that again. You can use any of the defaults um, or, the, or from the pull down, or you can also just type in where you want in any of those three questions. If you go to Walmart or to Target or, or, or one of the uh, big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere, and buy a trash can, and you, you measure it, you can just enter the size you want for that trash can, and you make the cabinet work with the can you've got. Uh, so that may be a good reason to use this cabinet over trying to use a Revis shelf unit or something like that. So now, when we come and look at that drawer bottom, we see that it's no longer 487, it's 527 deep to work with a 550 drawer. And that's pretty cool that it just automatically adjusted to do that. And also, uh, when we look at the sides, if needed, these holes would adjust. In that particular case, the 4, 510, and the 550 um, share this back hole position so it didn't need to adjust, but it would if it needed to. Or if you set it to, if you change that, the way that's setting and you wanted to use a different hole, then it would change that. It's, it's actually reading all of that. And you also see this radius is a lot tighter now because we chose a 12 millimeter radius instead of a 38 millimeter radius. Uh, so that's, that's uh, kind of the flagship feature is that we've taken that cabinet, refined it, uh, and got this trash pull out thing where you can now have two cans front to back. Um, and, and you can set this hole any size you want, and you can set the radius to anything you want. Uh, now, if you make this hole bigger than the drawer bottom, it's going to try to do that. It has no way to know that you've done that, but it'll be self-evident when you bring it up. You'll see that the, you know, you don't have enough perimeter, or you've gotten into your grooves, or something like that. You'll be into your drawer guides, um, so um, you know you do need to look at it. Uh, then, then on this cabinet number 67 is the second feature that we've got, and. <laughs> On this cabinet, we've added a feature at uh, Jay Miller's request. Um, so here's the top drawer bottom, and here's the bottom. Again, bottom, drawer bottom number two is always the bottom drawer. And if this could be any of the drawers through the options, and I'll show you how I selected that. But now we have a series of five millimeter holes within this drawer bottom, and then we've got the, the disables working where these holes will never get into your grooves. Um, now these holes are boring all the way through since this groove for a Zargon drawer or a Rabbit for an Overpro or Tandem drawer um, or three holes for a Metabox drawer um, are, are on the bottom of the drawer. So for these to be useful they have to go all the way through and so you will need to be using a V-point through bore bit um, for these holes and we'll drill these holes all the way through and then you have pegs that set into those holes. Um, and so this is, it, it, you can also buy the kit from from uh, Revis shelf and, and deal with the drawer bottom yourself, um, but this particular this kind of solves the problem. I have to cut size, cut grooves, and do all the other machining to it. It's just going to be nested with the rest of your uh, cabinet parts, so that should be useful. And it'll be the right material if you're using white. It'll be white. If it's plywood, it's plywood. If it's maple melamine, it'll be maple melamine. Um, so there's the the actual part itself, um, and here's how you would add it. You just double click on the cabinet, and you'll see when you go to your options now that you. At the bottom, you've got these new options of drawer uh, top peg holes and then drawer two peg holes, drawer three peg holes. Again, the top drawer, bottom drawer is actually drawer number two, and then this two here would actually be um, the, thir the third drawer bottom would be named that, uh, that it's the third drawer bottom, fourth and fifth. Uh, but here we're calling them two, three, four. But dr actual drawer number two, as far as a numbered drawer part, would be this bottom drawer. Um, and then we also have, you can add that to a pullout too, and that's probably a pretty good place to put those uh, pullout peg holes. Um, it is, you know, in a, in a pullout, someone might want to do that. And this, for, for those of you who aren't familiar with this system, Revit Shelf has a system that, um, uh, you know, allows you to have these holes in the bottom, this series of holes on 52 millimeter centers and uh, two inch centers, and you put these, these uh, wooden pegs in, and they capture a stack of plates or a stack of bowls, um, you know, whether it's big plates or small plates, because they're on, uh, you know, the grid, like you saw in that drawer bottom, you can position, set your drawer in there and have these pegs capture them so they won't fall over, um, and store your plates or bowls in a drawer or in a pullout. So that's how that works. Uh, one little caveat to it as far as using it, and again, this, this may be useful to some of you. Um, if you order the Revit shelf, they're going to be on 2-inch centers or 52 millimeter centers, period. But if you come to your True 32 part listing and go to Edit, um, and you go to drillsystem.prt, now I may change the name of this to M 
you know, see here we've got M machine set up in M material grain. Uh, I may change this in the M just, or these say A, but M is going to, because I'm going to move all the routing functions here, would be machining. So it might be M drill setup at some point, or drill system.prt at some point in time. Uh, but right now it's still called drill system.prt. And in here, I don't know if I stuck that at the very bottom. Let me see. Yeah, here it is. Um, at, the, at the very bottom of the list, it says pl uh, plate peg insert holes. And, and this is the plate hole spacing. And right now it's set at 52. Now, if you make this too small, it's going to take forever to drill the thing, um, and I may not have programmed enough holes into it to work. So, I, you know, I, I think most people, the 52 is going to be fine, but you could set it to 32, but if you set it to 32 and you got a cabinet that's 40 inches wide, the holes may not go all the way to the you know, edge of your drawer bottom because, I, you know, I just, if there's a lot of holes and it took a lot of time to do them. So um, be aware of that. So um, that's the two new flagship features. Um, uh, the trash pullout and the plate uh, pegs and, and how all of that works. A couple other things while I'm here, uh, just this material grain is the, the one, really the only item y'all have used in the past in this quick load area um, on a frequent basis, and I just reordered it. Um, tried to get it where, you know, we got 18, 19 uh, of the grain material, then 7, 19, 7, 19, and this, this being mat one, mat one, mat one, you know, the most common of mat one and mat two, mat three, and the same thing down here with a thin one, two, and three. I never use these twos and threes, but they are there and I've left them there. I, I just use these first three and these first three. Um, but, you know, this 18 mat one would be for veneer core stuff that's, most veneer core stuff is thinner than the particle board stuff, and this would be for your particle board stuff, this being for typically your interior parts, this being for your exterior parts. Um, but these have just been reordered, so the ones you use most frequently are, are the first three each time instead of just kind of mixed up. So um, just be aware that that's changed a little bit. And obviously this has changed a lot down here in that we have um, all of these drawer files. And if you have 9.02, uh, you have the drawer files, the dr-box files with the different uh, suffix that, that, that identifies the different drawer systems, but you don't have the pullout files. They were all just one file called T32 pullouts, depending on whether you had 9.02 and 9.01, or just pullouts.prt. Um, and that's a file that'll have to be deleted. Um, either, you know, one, one way to automatically delete it is when you do your update, would be to just delete the True32 folder out of the KCD folder and then delete the True32 part listing folder, and that way that would solve that. Otherwise, you might have an extra file in here, and it really won't, as long as you don't mess with it. And even if you did mess with it, it's just not used anymore. So, um, but but and I, in an installer, I can't delete a file that exists, but I don't use it anymore, so it, it does need to be deleted. And the best way to delete it is to delete the folders before you ever do your install. But otherwise, you can just delete it. You can even delete it from here. You know, you can click on a file and, and go to edit and, and delete a file. Um, from up in, in this area here to delete that file, and that would be fine too. So, uh, but all these pullouts are here now, and obviously we didn't need the one and two um, options down here. You do see up here that we have, and actually I, I removed them here. We didn't need them here either. The one and two is dealt with, you know, Zargon one, Zargon two, and what that means for any of you that don't know, and, and, and we have a Zargon one, Zargon two, Nova one, Nova two, Metabox one, Metabox two, Tandem one, Tandem two. All of those drawer systems, we've given you the ability to have the drawer placed in two separate positions on the drawer front. The drawer box is, is, is positioned on the drawer front. And in, in pullouts, we didn't need that. So we got rid of it. But um, there's only one file. But there's only one file for drawers, too, and we just deal with both in the single file. Um, so now, you know, you just have one file, like Nova. But once you get into Nova, um, if you were to look at the background of this, you'd actually see that there's a a single couple lines of code that deal with if you've chosen in your selection Nova 1 or Nova 2. Um, but, but this is where you would make any changes to the drawers themselves in these files. And, and then there's a couple extra files in here and it's a little new for some of you probably if you haven't messed with this much but if you come down here to True32 drawer box or um, the drawer system back and drawer system front this just controls the back system holes for drawers this controls the front system holes for drawers. Um, but as you see up here, you, you really don't see anything. 
and that's just because it's kind of a different kind of code and, and I didn't really didn't want to go through all the duplicates that's required to uh, because I don't think people are going to use this but if you did want to use it you could you just and I'm, I'm telling you here to edit this file change view to as text so you go to view and say as text and now you see what this is there's really no reason for you to change this unless you add a new drawer system which is not completely out of the question somebody might decide they want to add a new drawer system and all you have to do is copy one of them all the files associated with it and add the name of it to you know here change it rename the ones you copied and, and you could actually create a whole new drawer system if you wanted to uh, but this is just kind of the traffic cop and I, I'm kind of giving you some instructions up here this file is the traffic cop for drawer box types um, so all of the drawer box uh, files are all of your cab files call for a single file for drawer boxes and then that sends it to here and this says okay if if the drawer box method is Zargon 1 go to this file if it's Zargon 2 go to this file same file because they're dealt with within the single file same thing here same thing here so this, this all this one is is just a traffic cop for those particular um, files um, and then also here again you can control the system uh, the back system holes for drawers again to, to edit it you'd go here view as text and you know if you don't understand this stuff you probably shouldn't mess with it um, but but you can control a lot of these things here um, with the code that's here and some of it's a little more readable than others I mean this is pretty self-evident what's happening here um, you know that we want to set this if the depth is greater than or equal to 102 and the depth is less than 128 then we want to do this and such um, so you know you can if you kind of get how this works then you, you can change where that that hole is going to be if you don't want it at 224 you want it to be at 288 maybe sooner you might change this one here where it's saying this this one's saying from 380 to 430 and then from 430 to 479 you might say well, yeah but I want it to be at 288 from 430 to 479 and you could just change that number to 288 and it would be there so if you find a drawer system that that's applicable to, you could do that. But this is just setting that back line of holes where it's at. This is for a 270 millimeter long Nova Pro drawer. It's going to put the back line of holes at 160 millimeters um, from the front line. And this is for the 350, it's going to put it at 224. So you have control over those holes if you want to change them. Now, when I update you, you would want to copy this file out of the folder and then copy it back so that I don't overwrite it and that's not that hard to do um, uh, so that's that's an option and then we have the same thing here with the system front holes this controls the front holes this controls the back holes so within that file being the traffic cop this controlling the front holes or back holes this controlling the front holes and then a file for each drawer that pretty much is everything you need to know about drawers and if you wanted to try to duplicate something you if you kind of understood those three files, four files total, you could create your own, you know, another drawer system. Um, and, and after looking, you know, one of the things I was considering doing was actually creating one of these for each drawer model, kind of like we have Zargon and Metabox, um, doing the same thing for like a uh, an Accuride side guide versus a, a filter side guide versus a KV side guide. Uh, and it just got to the, where the list would be so long that you know there, there's just too many variables. So um, you know if you wanted to do something different with your side guides, uh, if this the whole pattern didn't work ideal for you with this um, setup, then you just come to this file and change those positions. You you have the control of where um, the you know what depth and where the holes are and all that in these files between those files, this file and this file. You can do anything you need to do to the drawers. Um, so that's uh, another of the new features is that the drawers and pullouts have all been separated. Um, a couple new cabinets that have been added. Uh, let's kind of scan through that. If we go to the tall group, we've got a new, and a little icon will pop up here, but we've got a new oven cabinet with two drawers under it. This is still a stacked unit. Then we've got, um, excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that. Then we've got a new three drawer and a new four drawer. So those oven cabinets um, are new and uh, functioning and working like the other oven cabinets we've always had. Um, 
with rails above and below and all you know, all the, the machining has really been cleaned up on all of these oven cabinets over the last couple uh, up incremental upgrade grades but we also have a new tall pantry uh, this this pantry is full height it's not a stacked unit like this is you know uh, the upper portion of a, a, a stacked pantry and this being the lower portion of a stacked pantry well this is the whole unit you know I, I, I wouldn't use it myself because I wanted to move it um, but Jay Miller needed it for a particular job so I went ahead and, and, and added it just in case someone else needs it um, also down here in this tall cabinet special this was something that uh, a few of you used that Mark Poole had uh, created for his own use and then some of you used and, and I've never used it so I haven't messed with anything in here but um, this cabinet right here that again is a full height pantry it's not a stacked pantry pair doors over two drawers David Brescher needed it and wanted it and so and it just wasn't cut listing properly so I fixed that I haven't messed with anything else in here I don't even know if any of this other stuff works but that one someone needed so I, I made sure it was cut listing right and it is uh, so that's been taken care of um, that kind of going through my list here making sure I'm catching everything that. All right, another option that we have now is under this change option we have a set unit info and this has always been here um, but KCD said not many people use it um, but I thought it'd be good, you know, several people had requested, well, what if I have a file drawer in a desk and I want to use uh, a dovetail drawer box or a five-piece drawer box there, but I want to use Zargon drawers everywhere else or any other combination that you can think of. You know, I want to use Zargon drawers everywhere else, but I want to use, you know, the Nova Pro, that 154-pound Nova Pro there. Well, this gives you the ability to change the drawer type on one cabinet the entire job which really with the drawer questions this becomes useless we really don't need this because we would use the drawer questions to do that um, but this overrides the drawer questions so if you came in here uh, you could choose by unit and say I just want to pick this one cabinet uh, you know maybe this drawer stack right here and I want it to have something else so you select that cabinet and you say the drawer type uh, for that cabinet might be um, you know Nova and then you might, you know, if it had pullouts, you could say, and I want the pullouts to be tandem box or, or whatever. You, you know, you, you could choose something different there too. Um, but you have control over each unit. You could change the cabinets in each unit, or just one room could be Zargon and one room could be uh, Nova Pro, whatever. You, you know, this gives you control by room, by unit, or the entire job. And again, the entire job is kind of irrelevant since we now have those uh, and I can't move that box so I'm not sure I, I know you can't see all of that but but this box is not movable um, so down this right side you're probably seeing part of that um, it's basically got a list of all the cabinets that are in this job and and again you have the option of choosing the drawer type and the pullout type for any one of those cabinets by choosing that cabinet as I change this I get different options so this would you know whatever I select here would do it for the whole job here I come down here and pick the cabinet I want it to apply to or here I can say I just want to change the master bath cab drawers to Nova One where I'm going to choose Zargon for the kitchen. However you wanted to do it, any combination you want, that gives you the ability to do that. So um, ho hopefully I haven't opened too many things where I haven't paid attention and you couldn't see it. All right, that takes care of that one. All right, another option under the parts, and Rick Riverich brought this up last week that there needed to be some clarification on this. Um, when you come here, a setup it is like the default KCD. This is just it defaults to this one. Even though the one we're going to use the most often is a material grain setup, it still defaults to a setup. That just always in every library defaults to a setup. But I don't have anything in a setup that I need you to look at every single time you come here. Um, anytime you get ready to run code, if you're a CNC user, you need to set this graining. If you're a manual user, you probably never even bother to come here. There's really no need need to come here for the most part, unless you're changing something um, permanently, not job to job. Um, but because this was the first thing to come up, he was looking through this each time, and and, and you know I never did really clarify that it needed to or didn't need to, um, and it's just it's irrelevant. And he thought he needed to look at these things each time and maybe make selections each time. You don't. You really don't need to do anything here, um, but kind of wanted to clarify some new features this feature was actually in 9.02 where we have the ability to consolidate toe freeze and flat freeze um, 
those, like I say, those features were added in 9.02, but there was a conflict with fillers. So um, if you, you know, certain combinations, sun aligned with the moon, you get some conflicts. It didn't work right, but I've fixed that now. So these are usable. So if you like the idea of tow material coming out and already being uh, consolidated when, when you get to the report center, as opposed to doing it in the report center, this does that. The caveat for all three of these is whatever the size of the last one was is what it's going to be. So for example, if you've got a 110 millimeter tow throughout your kitchen um, and, and you're going to run the bathroom with the kitchen and you just happen to change the tow height in the bathroom to 124 and you're only going to need one piece of 124 millimeter tow, but you're going to need a total of about six or seven pieces of tow, you're going to get six or seven pieces of 124 millimeter tow because it looks at the last piece of tow for this consolidation. So in those cases, you'd want to come in here and toggle this to off and do it within the report center. Uh, but I, you know, I've, I've seen that personally myself one time that that was a problem. So um, I think that for the most part, this is just going to work well for everyone um, to be able to go ahead and consolidate those things um, and have them uh, just as long strips to be cut in the field. Um, and the, it, the freeze actually has notes on it to edge band two long edges. This the toe actually has a note on it telling you to groove the back um, and the crown, or I mean the flat freeze edge band two long edges. So all you know those kind of things have already been added to it. This right here controls those drawer questions. If you use the same drawer 100% of the time, never change it. You could set it here to whatever that drawer is, and you could set this to no, and it won't ask you the questions anymore. So again, we've just given you the control over whether those questions pop up or not. Um, right there, just it's a pull-down box of yes and no. So I've tried to, as many things as possible, gone ahead and given you a pull-down box for you to choose what your options are, as opposed to trying to put your options over here in parentheses. Where I can't do that, I have still done the parentheses with a uh, trying to clarify for you what your options are. All right, so got that. that. Um, added a new center hinge plate. So, well, while we're here, let me look at that. Uh, let's go to drill system. I believe that's right up here. Somewhere, let's see, drawer hardware hinge holes. All right, do you want horizontal hinge plate holes on cabinet sides? And this really only applies to the center holes. I probably need to change that description. Um, so, so this is for tall cabinets. And the question is, do you want horizontal hinge plate holes on, on you know, cabinet sides? Um, and then the, the location, if it is horizontal, this is the vertical question up here and the position. And this is for the horizontal. And, and some people have decided because of shelf holes that they do want to use the horizontal plate so that the hole falls in front of and behind the shelf holes and it doesn't conflict with the shelf holes as much. It still could conflict with them. I mean, if, they, if you got a hinge plate right in the middle where the shelf goes or the, the pot of five holes or seven holes, obviously that's somewhat of a problem. Um, but some people want to use the horizontal plate. I've got both of them set to yes as the default and you get all four holes and, and all you got to do is set this for your hinge model um, and then you have the option. It doesn't look bad, um, and I'll show you in a minute. It you know, just has a little T-shape of holes, um, and you just put whatever hinge plate you want, whichever one is applicable for the job you're using. Um, but if you have a tall door, this is going to automatically put hinge holes for the center hole. Now, I'm not positive that the um, positioning is going to be suitable for everyone. Um, David Brescher is the one that asked for it, and David said that he would prefer it to be right in the center of the door. Um, all the time because that is easier on drilling the hinge but that does conflict with the uh, shelf holes and right now I've just left it uh, let's go ahead and start a new job here real quick and add a wall and we'll just go ahead and add a tall cabinet we we'll use that new tall pantry that's as good as any um, and we'll just make this top door really small so we know that the bottom door is big enough to have need that. And we'll just yeah, 610 is good. So now we got this cabinet with really tall doors down here, and obviously we have to have some hinges for it to need hinge plates. So hinge the cabinets. And look at the side panels here for the calculate. Yeah, I don't I 
really zoom that in any way. Hopefully it looks really small on my screen. Hopefully it's big enough that you can see it. You kind of see a diamond shaped pattern there where it's actually, in this case it is, just because of the height, falling into within those shelf holes. Um, but we have, uh, you know, here was where you would put your center hinge if you were going to use a vertical plate and then these two holes if you were going to use a horizontal plate. Um, and you have both options. In this case it definitely doesn't look bad because these holes would have been there anyway. So, but that's how it works. Um, and that, that option is there for anyone that wants to, to use it. And you can also turn it off if you don't want it. That, that you saw the questions there for yes and no. Um, also added, um, you saw there that we added a, a, the bloom or added the bloom meta box. So I'm going to uh, go back to that job we were just in. That was it. There it is. Um, and I'm going to cut this that same cabinet, that three drawer stack. Cabinet number 67 parts. Let's calculate. And this time I'm going to choose the meta box and just show you the difference uh, of what. Again, a great big caveat with the meta box is that I did this all off of just specifications so I don't I didn't have any physical drawer guides to test anything with I've never done a Metabox drawer in my entire life um, the, the closest I've come to dealing with Metabox is I've stayed in a condo that had them <laughs> so um, but I don't think I chose getting number 67 and I don't want to cut this this whole thing stack calculate all right, now I want to choose another box. So when we look at the drawer bottoms, instead of having a groove um, like the Zargon has, they just have these three, and, and uh, I don't even remember what they call them, but placement holes or something, and apparently there's some tabs or something on a meta box, and these just help you place the drawer onto this, and then apparently you run some screws. Um, so you see even this particular one already had that feature turned on so it's got the holes for the plate pegs but also the holes for the drawer guide and then this one does not in the holes and their drawer ends have five millimeter holes instead of ten millimeter holes like Zargon um, and there's also more of them you know they there's two on the even the shortest drawer back um, and even four on uh, not very tall at all. It's only 139 millimeter back. It's got four holes, but they're five millimeters instead of ten. And there's more of them. So that's the difference in the in the metal box. Now let's pop over to Report Center. Uh, get, let, let me one time pop right back here. When you get done installing, if you want to confirm that everything worked like it's supposed to, and that you're using version 9.03. If you come to cut listing and choose True32 part listing, it should say so right there. This 9.03, not 9.1 or 9.01 or 2, but it should say 9.03. And when you start Report Center, it should say 9.03 up there after you've installed it. Um, but also when you get to these other screens, um, there's always a button up here, and that button always has the, the version number in it. A couple things we need to talk about here. Um, first and foremost, if you're using order link, and this is kind of run off here, but let me, uh, right here, I've given you the path that you need to use if you have Vista or Windows 7. It needs to have this x86 in parentheses within this path with a space right there, um, but also make absolutely certain there's no spaces in front of or behind of that path when you plug it into this field. If you've got an extra space in front behind it, it'll be broke, it won't work. Um, you won't be able to see a space behind it. You might catch a space in front of it by looking, you know, kind of aligning with the ones above it, but you might not even catch that. Uh, but just make sure you put that path just like it's listed over to the right if you have uh, Vista or Windows 7. Um, and then otherwise the path will be preset for uh, any other uh, versions of Windows. So that's where you do that. Um, and then when you come to your KCW parameters now, you'll notice that edge banding is a good example almost everything now says not used and I am migrating all these things out of here um, of this whole list of 13 items I'm only using three now the rest of these variables over here are irrelevant they're not being used at all um, some of them weren't being used anyway they were just here so um, and there's several places like that uh, let me pop down through and see if I can uh, get here 
the microwave with them. They, they haven't been used in a long, long time. So just went ahead and marked them as non-used and zeroed them out. Um, so you're not wasting time thinking about something that's not relevant anyway. Uh, changed the back height, this math, to one millimeter shorter because I've created, um, you know, every, everything is now accounting for edge banding everywhere. In CNC, if you're a manual guy, don't worry about it. Ignore that. Um, but it shouldn't matter that your back is 607 instead of 608 either way. Uh, but if you want it to be 608, you change this back to 160 and take that one out of there. So th this is if option 27, which is full height backs, then we want, th that's the if statement. The if statement is always in parentheses. So it's saying if option equals 27, full height backs, then make it the height minus the kick minus one. I needed that extra millimeter since I'm accounting for the edge banding. Uh, or if that's not true, then make it height minus kick minus 161 because we're going to have a 160 millimeter nailer. Um, but this still has our 180 millimeter nailer. So this is just shortening that back one millimeter. And I did that with wall cabinet backs and tall cabinet backs too. Just shorten them all. This one one and the tall and the wall two millimeters. Um, just to count for um, the fact that I'm now accounting for edge banding. Uh, again, you see some not used down here. There's quite a few of those. Uh, this little thing here, I don't know how, how many of you even realize this is here, but I wanted to touch on this. Under the door hardware section, this is where you control the position, for CNC guys anyway, um, of the hinge holes for these odd cabinets, whether it be blind. So this one, I have to change it from time to time. If I'm doing uh, a, a blind cabinet with a shelf in it and no Lazy Susan, then I want this set to 37 because I have those little 90 degree brackets that work with my grass hinges that actually work with a standard position. Otherwise, I have to put it, uh, I believe it's at 14, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure, and I've got it written down in the operations manual. Um, so I have to change this if I am going to use a, a, a Lazy Susan in the cabinet. Um, and here for your angled and clip cabinets, it needs to be 64 and a half if you're using the grass 4703 hinge. If yours is different, you need to change that. Um, and then 40 45 cabinets, and you just see here that we've got these distinguished between um, upper 45s versus base 45s versus tall 45s. So basically it's the same question three times down here and then one question for blind panels. So, but some people just didn't even realize that was there, but you do have control over those hinge holes, hinge plate holes. Again, this one's almost everything's been not, you know, changed to not used. The only thing left is this auto projection down and the five piece drawer front, whether it gets thick, and this just determines where it falls into your order link order. Um, you know, as a door or as a drawer front. Um, and then th this is this one is pretty critical here. Uh, edge banding, almost all of them gone. Hardware, this this is just, if you don't ever use this to order hardware, you, you can zero these out or get rid of them or just ignore them. Um, I don't know how many of you changed this, um, but this does give you control over how that island wall builds. This is how I build it. But, you know, if you want to do something different, you would change it here. Um, in the machining portion of it, again, the only thing that I changed in here was how to, uh, uh, well, I actually don't think I changed anything in this particular file, uh, other than the, the suspension block notch. Th these two dimensions have been changed by about a millimeter. Um, trying to get that suspension block, I would just raise the suspension block up about a millimeter, um, and it's flush in the top now. I'm not having to push the top down to it, and it keeps the suspension block covers nice and tight. But if you don't like it, you can change them. Um, the, the, you do have control over these. Uh, didn't change any of that. Didn't change any of those thicknesses. Didn't mess with the nailers. You guys, uh, some of you do leave off that back rail. So this is where you do that. And most of the guys that are doing that know that. But this is where you control the back rail in a base cabinet. And this is where you control the rail under the knee space. So you can turn those rails off um, if you don't want to use them. Again, adjusted the height here of the back, just took off two more millimeters just to make sure that I had some clearance after accounting for edge banding. Um, in the tools drill, I think pretty much everybody's on the same page, other than a few of you might be using a 10 millimeter bit right here uh, for skid boring. And if you are, you just need to change that 15 to a 10 and this 15 to a 10. Um, this is the most common, so when you get it, I'm going to overwrite whatever you've got. Um, and and if, you know, once I do that, uh, you know, it'd be wrong if you've got a 10 millimeter bit doing it, so you want to change that to 10 and this to 10. Um, before you even get started, a good idea would be to come up here to scripts before you even do the True32 update 
and print your True32 current. Uh, True32 KCDW parameters. If you print this out or print out every one of these groups and, and then you highlight the ones that you ultimately change and next time it'll be really quick go through and hit the ones that are highlighted and change them uh, back to whatever it is you do. But most commonly the one that I see the most would be rails. Some of you guys turn that to no and then in the tools drill some of you use a 10 millimeter bit here and then under the tools route um, I have the default at what seems to be the most common although this is not mine um, this is set to 9.53, which is a 3 8 bit for your nesting. And, you know, all of these first ones you see are set to, you know, this is for the back, these eight here, but all of these are your nesting bit that say 9.53, and mine are all set to eight. I just change all those to eight. You also see some of these are not used, too. These three right here aren't used anymore. Um, yeah, looks like there's only three, but some of them aren't used. Uh, but if you're using an 8 millimeter bit, the, 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 the bit that we have custom made, that allows you to groove for the back and nest with the same bit, then you would just set all these that say 9.53 to 8 here. And, I, and I've, this is shared now. This doesn't change from tool to tool or, or from user to user. This 3.8 machining is relevant to all of us. Um, may even change that name to just machining at some point in time because it really is not necessarily 3.8, but 9.53 is 3.8. Uh, and here again, the only thing I changed in this group would be that back height, uh, the path or the formula for that. So that covers, uh, let me just look at my list real quick, make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. All right, I do want to cover one more thing in KCD. I talked about the order link path. Okay, so the only other thing left that I need to cover, coming back to KCD, um, would be if depending on how some of you want to do your your edge banding if you come here to true 32 part listing and edit to the quick load area this edge banding file here and this is not self-evident but most of you that have 9.0 or 9.1 or 9.2 know how this works now but the edge banding indicators that you see on your part anybody that has a CNC that you see on your parts are controlled by whether you have this set to something and a material selected. Um, so the, the number determines the part size. If you have a 0.5 in here for that edge banding, then it's going to shorten your part by 0.5. And if you have 0.5 for top and bottom, it's going to shorten it by a millimeter. But these two here, whether it's finished or unfinished, determine whether you get an edge banding indicator or not. So if you don't want edge banding indicators and you're not going to edge band the tops and bottoms of your end panels, you would set, uh, let's see what this is, base cabinet box edge band thickness and then this one is for front edge so that one should stay on right here well this little indicator here is telling you that one's for the front but this is for the bottom and some of you don't want to do the bottom of a base cabinet so you would just come to that field and type a zero in there come to this field and select nothing I've made nothing the other option um, and if you select nothing in both of these then for finished and unfinished you won't get edge banding indicators at the bottom um, of your base cabinets. And then the same thing for um, this. Th this is all about base cabinets. And then you keep coming down far enough and you get to upper cabinets and do that same thing over again. And in that case, you'd probably be turning it off for uh, the top right in here. You'd probably set that to zero and then select nothing here and, you know, and then here as well. So that's where the edge banding indicators come from. I will probably change these descriptions in the future uh, to indicate that. I've got plenty of room here to do that to say, hey, this also controls the edge banding indicators. Um, but it's just it's one of those kind of the byproduct of if you say, hey, I want to use this material there, then obviously you want to have an, an edge band there. You, you've answered, and, and then this is doing the math, but this is controlling the indicator. So that's where that's done and that, that's something that I've had several questions about so I wanted to cover in this video. And that covers all of the new features that I wanted to go over. Apologize for the length of this video. Uh, but wanted to cover everything and I'm going to do another one that's hopefully fairly short on the actual update process itself and put it up as well um, so that everybody will have a, uh, a good idea of the things that basically how to delete that file I talked about and just kind of go through the actual update process itself. Uh, so appreciate you taking the time to listen and watch, and uh, hope this was helpful. 
Um, and if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to call me anytime. Thanks a lot.